Uh, Joker here, and I hope you're watching Batman Statue Collector. <laughs> Because every time the temperature is the same, <laughs> it never changes. I bet it's nicer here than it is where I came from, though. Uh, probably. It oh, was yeah. 100, 108. Oh, yes. uh, we hardly get over 80 here. Yeah, yeah that's beautiful. All right, so this is where I am staying. I'm staying at the Residence Inn here in San Diego. But I'm getting ready to go out, and venture out into the world, right straight over there to Comic-Con. So that's what we're going to do first. I'm going to meet up with Jeff Delaney. I'm going to also meet up with Chad from Tweeterhead, which should be really awesome. So anyway, that's the plan going forward. And uh, anyway, let's do this. Comic-Con time, baby. Here we go. Can you guys feel it? Can you feel the excitement? First time going to Comic-Con here in San Diego. I am freaking pumped. <laughs> Look how awesome that is. That is really cool. Talk about advertising, that is really awesome. Look how cool that severance sign is, that's awesome. All right, so awesome. I just picked up my band. Basically this is a uh, verification, health verification. So everybody has to do that, negative COVID test or just proof of vaccination. Uh, I am vaccinated, so I'm good to go. And we only have to do it one time, so that's even better. So anyway, I'm now getting ready to go meet up with uh, Chad at Tweeterhead and get my pass. All right, so this is what it's like walking in this massive building. I am supposed to go over here to Hall C, and that's where I am meeting. So I think just right up this way. And again, this place is awesome. There's Comic-Con banners everywhere, which is really, really cool. R2-D2. Yeah. Here's where I just came from. You see some awesome buildings. So I don't know which hall this is, but uh, it's a bit of registration. But there's Hall C down there. So Booth, and there are a few uh, XM pieces here. This is an Aphrodite, of course. Really awesome to see this prototype here. She looks great. Of course, this is the one that I really wanted to see in person. She looks absolutely phenomenal. Very, very awesome piece from Front XM Studios. Hello, Hello, how's it going? Hi there. Good to see you. Thank you very much. Please, awesome uh, piece. This is our fourth and fifth XM statue, by the way. It's awesome. I collect a lot of XM statues, so they're, it's they're, awesome to see these. some of the best. I like the size. Um, putting them together sometimes is a challenge. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> what I do for a living, so <laughs> I, I hear that. <laughs> Very, very cool. Again, Top Cow Booth, if you're in the area, please make sure you check them out. Very, very awesome. I had to show you guys, I missed this, uh, the uh, PCS booth earlier, but this is the Chung Lee Street Fighter life-size bus. This is silicone, and it is absolutely incredible seeing it in person. It's really massive, beautiful base. You guys can see the detail there. Absolutely just phenomenal. Obviously cut and sew on this one. A lot of, yeah, really beautiful portrait. 
it's really really cool to see this so this is obviously going to be probably a new line for them again pcs killing it all right guys we're going to start with the incredible life-size loki bust again from queen studios let's get a close-up of him just crazy how good that is from top to bottom really really impressive cannot believe this this is without a doubt really good quality Again, great likeness to Tom Hiddleston. That is absolutely phenomenal. Kind of a far away shot here. This looks really impressive. Queen Studios, once again on point. They continue to get better. Awesome. All right, so next up, of course, we have the life-size bust again from Queen Studios. One of their newest pieces of a pre-order currently absolutely fantastic again using medical grade silicone glass eyes hand punched hair very very impressive to benedict cumberbatch again great attention to detail obviously again you have just really great fabric elements obviously a polystone base you can see some of the detail in the cape itself but again what everybody's going to be wowed by of course is that incredible likeness this looks absolutely fantastic. Really, really impressive. Wow. All right, next up, of course, we have Captain America. It, he is massive, guys. Like, he is absolutely massive. Looks really impressive in person. I love the fact that they made the shield in front. Just looks really, really good. And again, the likeness is just phenomenal. They really nailed the portrait. They nailed the likeness. Of course, you got Monier. Really, really awesome. Avengers base. And again, I'm here to tell you, like this thing is just really, really quite massive. But again, the portrait, really, really good. Really, really impressive. All right, so next up, of course, we have the half-scale Captain America. Again, this thing is absolutely massive. It looks really good. Again, you have great likeness. Really nailed this one. This would pair up really nice. Again, you got the, the bust over there. And again, you can see just how big this thing is compared to it. It's just nuts how massive these are. Again, at half-scale. Again, the attention to detail from Queen Studios is Second to none. Really, really impressive. The weathering on the boots. Really large, massive round base. Again, you can see the weathering, the speckling on the boot. Give it that muddy effect. Again, great texturing throughout. Again, it is fully sculpted. You can see the uh, sculpt detail there. Again, that portrait. Phenomenal. Really nice job on this one. Again, Queen Studios hitting it out of the park here at San Diego Comic Con. Really awesome. Next up, of course, we have uh, Tom Holland. This is another piece that I feel like looks better in person. Oh, yeah. Just eerily creepy how good it looks. But it's very, very good again. Medical grade silicone, hand punched hair, glass eyes, polystone here at the base. It is very, very impressive. It's really good to me, guys. Really, really good. Very, very impressive. We also have some stuff from um, Elite Creatures, which is really cool. This is a really awesome t uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Really, really big piece. Really neat. Of course, everybody's over there posing with Loki. How could you not? We've got some other ones over here. The Unkillable. Sick piece. Just crazy, crazy piece. 
life-size bus run while you can, that's for sure. And then, of course, we've got some other ones here. We've got some aliens, which are fun. Fun pieces. Again, all from elite creatures. Some fun pieces here at this booth. And again, this is all really, really fun to see, all of these amazing pieces. And again, it's all here at the Toy Nami booth. Really, really fun stuff here. Really fun. tell you guys it's the first night and it is freaking nuts just preview night but we're having a great great time so far let's keep looking around Good morning. So basically this is day two. Uh, yesterday it was a whirlwind and I didn't get a ton of footage obviously outside of the booth tours, but today I'm going to focus more on just all the other stuff. I obviously I have a couple more booth tours to do, but uh, you know, I was basically up editing all night and uh, I've got about four hours of sleep. Back at them early for you guys, of course, and uh, cannot wait to see what day two will bring. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go grab some breakfast and then we'll head down and head to the con. All right, so we're on officially our way to day two at the con. Beautiful morning here in San Diego. And of course, I'm gonna meet up with uh, Jeff Delaney from Secret Sanctuary. That's gonna be awesome. And uh, hopefully hit some panels today as well. So it's very, very exciting. But uh, again, it's just overwhelming. Take a look at this. Again, just really, really awesome. All right, let's make our way down. All right, guys, so I am here at Choice Fine Art. Look at this, Charles Carrozza right here in the house. I finally get to meet Charles. This is just an absolute honor to finally meet you here, same here same at here. San Diego Comic Con. And he's going to give us a little booth tour. You guys want to come along? It's going to be awesome, right? Let's go. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's do it. All right, I'll just let you do your thing. So what we have is we're bringing the, the DC archives 
back to the collector. This is stuff that you guys haven't seen for about 20 years. Uh, unfortunately, once the Warner Brothers stores closed, everybody thought this stuff was gone, and it's now back. We're slowly but surely uh, getting uh, everything unwrapped and getting it back out to you guys, matching it up with the right backgrounds. This way it's all authentic. Warner Brothers seals, authenticated, everything on the up and up. Welcome back to the archives. It's so happy, awesome. Happy, happy to have it's it. so great. We have some beautiful Alex Ross. The remainder of, of what's what's available still. Yep, a absolutely. Lot of, unfortunately, his original art is sold out, but original art still here. And of course, obviously, being DC, you got to have Jim Lee. Oh yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Got tons of Jim Lee stuff. All of his art, all signed, limiteds, one of ones, a little bit of everything for you guys. And uh, happy to uh, bring this stuff back to you guys. We are at booth number forty-two nineteen. Come on, stop by, mention the Batman Statue Collector, get a special discount today. Yeah, hey, I like that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, I'm going to keep doing a booth tour and All we'll right. keep going. All right. All right. Last but not least, Jim Lee, John Romita Jr., uh, Sh uh, Shelly, and Bob Kane. That's awesome. More Jim Lee right there. Very, very cool. So much great art here at your booth. Guys, thank you so much. Come on, stop by, say hello. Absolutely, we'll do it. All right, guys. Man, everywhere I go, followed by the wall of shirts. There it is. Very, very cool down here in Artist Alley. It's awesome. Check it out the Funko area. This is crazy. Going all out here. Really neat. You can see <laughs> at the Funko store. It's great. Go around the corner here. Really, really awesome. So neat. We got uh, the Mondo booth here. Get some great pieces here obviously that new Joker got some exclusive prints as well looks great it's a fun booth it's really awesome I'm at the uh, Square Enix booth. Some massive statues here. Really, really cool. Got some great stuff here. This one's really awesome. video game based. Really nice sculpts. I'm really impressed. Got some real good stuff here. It's fun. <laughs> He's a photo double from here to here, and that's what we figured out. <laughs> Morning, man. How you doing? I'm lying my ass off. That's I mean, here, here we are. That's how it is. I first realized it could be a career. Were those two separate incidents? Um, I lived in Detroit. Didn't have a lot of culture. Uh, comics were my culture. Uh, 
my dad worked at Chrysler as a draftsman, and he would steal all the tracing paper, masking tape, and everything that he could stick into his briefcase each night. He thought he was going to use it for his uh, woodworking hobby. I discovered I could trace comics, and I could put little tracing paper drawings up on the wall. So that was pretty cool. And well, um, that classic, uh, you know, Ditko had a very lean and efficient style, and then it got to be a little bit more flourish. Was that something coming out of those meetings and parties and things where you saw like the art kind of evolve closer to what it is today? Well, the art and the, the printing was actually getting better also. Even back in the 70s, we were getting uh, a little bit whiter paper, and uh, the they did switch over to the plastic plates from the metal ones, and that kind of thing I've ever seen myself either. How did you see it going? Is there anything you remember from what you would have done with Robin had he not been beat to death with a crumble? I figured for sure he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody liked this character. Uh, plus, I'm sorry, but as fans, as a pool, there were a bunch of ghouls. <laughs> you know? I was shocked when the, the tally came in and there was only 72 votes difference out of over 10,000. It was statistically the same. And so I said, Bob Kane must have been calling in. <laughs> There's a step on the back. Time for a little lunch with Mr. Delaney. Tin fish, recommended. Let's go check it out. All right, guys, we are here with Mr. Jeff Delaney and his son, of course. We are getting ready for the Jim Lee uh, panel, which is awesome. Of course, I just saw him about a month ago, but it's going to be awesome to see him drawing live. Are you excited? It's going to be great. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I've not been to a panel like the Spotlight Jim Lee panel before. Oh, what are you guys doing here? What brought you here? <laughs> I, I, if you've been here, I know that you go, like, this is magical. I'm going to come back next year or whatever. But for people that are new, like, what, what, what prompted you guys? Is there a cool panel right after this one or something? <laughs> yeah. No? All right. Yeah, so uh, my name is Jim Lee. I am uh, an artist, but I'm also the publisher, chief creative officer for DC for maybe what, like a third of the people? Maybe a quarter of you guys have never been to a spotlight panel before? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that, that pencil form, that literally is what I just penciled out. So it's really just, I don't know, it's, it's psychological, it's easier, there's some pencil work. <coughs> but anyway, when we became naturalized citizens, um, my parents said, well, you can change, legally change your name, you can choose whatever name you want. And I was like 12 years old at the time, and I picked James, because I was a huge Star Trek fan. Uh, and people would call me Jim. I used to walk people through, like, okay, this is how I draw Batman, think of a porch, you know, think of a pyramid, all that other stuff. Then I saw what people would draw, and I'm like, well, I don't know if that's the way to do it. So, um, it's tricky. Drawing is a tricky thing. Um, but I will tell you, and if you've watched the Twitch stream, and you're kind of wondering, actually, how can I do this? Uh, it really is just repetition. It is the, t the proverbial 10,000 hours that you have to put in, and I've probably drawn at least 10,000 hours of Batman heads, I think, over at this point. It's still a challenge. Every, every time I draw it, it comes out a little different, right? Which is interesting, because it's not like uh, Snoopy or Mickey Mouse where it has to look on brand or whatever. Uh, I think one of the cool things about American superhero comics is that we actually encourage our art artists and creative teams to kind of visually define the characters and make them their own, and that's why you have Batman with long ears and short ears, long cape, short case, buckles, utility belts, or nice. Yeah, so uh, I, th I think, um, look, everyone starts in art, I think for those who are, because they, uh, they love someone else's work, there's some work 
a story that grabs them and, and makes them transports them to another world. That's why they get into the world of comics and want to. Thank you for me. Excuse me. Thank you for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So some people have amazing taste. Some people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Um, so we just did the Jim Lee panel, and now we've separated. Uh, Jeff's going to go film a little bit. I'm going to go film a little bit and hit up Artist Alley. So I uh, can't wait to check out that and uh, meet some artists. So let's do it. guys so we're here in the Alex Ross booth very very impressive obviously to be able to see all of his art I did make a Alex Ross purchase today which is very exciting piece I've wanted for a really long time but again it's just really awesome to be able to see all of these amazing prints
epic, epic booth. Brand new one right here. Very awesome. Here's an epic one right here. Absolutely gorgeous. Classic, classic right here. The Undertaker right over here. Great wrestling figures here as well. So I'm taking a break from the con. Actually, I'm just hanging out with Jeff Delaney. Really awesome time. Um, just talking about collecting and everything else in between. But I want to show you guys something. This is the line. This is the next day line for Hall H. I want to show you what it's like. So I'm going to flip the camera and you guys can see way off in the distance. That's a line. And then the line goes this way. And it goes all the way. You can see the harbor back over there. But the line, and again, this is what happens every single day. And so the line goes all the way around. You can see that big giant hotel there, the Marriott. It goes all the way around that corner. Again, the hall holds 6,000 people, and people still have to do this every single day in order to get into Hall H. So it's really quite incredible, but uh, I definitely wanted to show you what this line is like because it's definitely something you don't see every day. Definitely different than any other con I've been to without a shadow of a doubt, but still very cool. Again, it goes all the way around to that other peak building, that America Horror Story right there all the way down the harbor. <clears throat> I mean, come on, how insane is that? That is really, really crazy, obviously. <laughs> I am not waiting in that line. I am not going to Hall H. Uh, I was advised I'm too old for that stuff. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go back, I think, and head to the uh, hotel room, rest a little bit. But So have lots more Comic-Con action here in San Diego. I'm exhausted, but I'm having a freaking blast.
All right, guys, we're here at the uh, Diamond Select booth. I wanted to give you guys a quick tour of some of the items in this booth. Again, Diamond Select always does a great job with all different scales, bus, and everything else in between. Again, some are resin, some are PVC. Again, it's really cool to see all of these. Got Boba Fett down here. Really great Luke with Baby Yoda. Some really great animated stuff. Again, all of the busts are really cool. Which looks awesome. And it's just really cool to see all of this here at San Diego. Comic Con, of course. Oh, yeah. Really great bus. Again, these are all resin, resin bus. Some stuff from the animated series. <laughs> really, really cool. Sorry about the glare. We've got some great ones here. So Katano, of course. Again, really great detail. Little Boba Fett right there, as you can see. And this one right here, this Grogu is really fun. I think this one looks uh, even better than the Sideshow premium format. Really nice, bigger scale. We have some great stuff here. Kind of going quick here, guys, because the con is about ready to close for the evening. But couldn't leave you hanging. Actually, I love these busts. I think they're really well done. Reminds me of when I started out. I started out with some of these busts as, as collectibles. Oop, got a wounded soldier there. Again, some really great stuff. Green Hornet. And Bruce Lee. We even have some AEW ones now. We got some CM Punk. Which is cool. Even got some like little figures, kind of like little Legos. Ruby Riot or John Moxley. That's fun. Got some smaller scale pieces. He's turtles, little tiny. These are really fun. Cobra Kai. That really fun. Got Ronan here as well. That looks great. Obviously, you got the Casey Jones mask, which is fun. Some Godzilla. Down here, you got some larger pieces here, some Transformers. This looks great. Uh, Beast Wars, of course. Got some GI Joe. These are a little bit larger scale. These are PVC. This looks great. Got some Destro. We got some Marvel pieces here as well. Again, these are going to be all PVC. Uh, you know, having reviewed a lot of these for you guys, it's uh, always nice to see the great paint detail on these. They do a, a really nice job. Uh, Craven the Hunter. Looks good. And we got here also. I <laughs> love this one right here. Captain Carter. It's really good. These are fun. Really beautiful paint. Psylocke got a really big Hulk. Again, these are all Diamond Select guys. Diamond Select. Really great company. They produce a lot of really great statues and also affordable pieces as well. From the $40 to $100 mark. Depending on what you get. Some smaller pieces there. And of course, we also have some larger scale here as well. These are going to be resin, which look great. Quite tall. And then we have some of their Legends in 3D, which again are really, really cool. You guys have seen some of these on the channel. But a really nice scale, which is really nice. Got the thing, which looks great. Really, really fun stuff. You can go around the corner here and see if there's anything else on this side. Go around the front side here. And again, they have uh, you know a lot of their stuff where you can actually purchase here on the show floor. Which looks great. Again, all kinds of really good stuff. I would like to like put headphones in. It's really really fun. 
There's the Axe AI. <laughs> again, really, really fun booth. Uh, again, if you are here at San Diego Comic Con, I really recommend the booth. The booth is awesome. Uh, again, Diamond Select right here as you come in, which is really great. And again, it's just great, affordable pieces at really great quality. So definitely check them out if you are here. Uh, really fun stuff. So anyway, that's the booth tour for San Diego Comic Con Diamond Select. Great booth tour. This is really cool. They actually have some of the uh, Kodo USA uh, Batman versus Joker, which is really cool. I've never seen this one in person. This is the one that has been out for some time. Uh, actually looks really good in person. And then here at the convention, actually they have a convention exclusive, and that is going to be the black and gray version, obviously, with the uh, the more modern logo. Uh, you can see the blood on his fist, which looks great. Very, very awesome. And then, of course, you have the Joker as well. The Joker is the same. Um, you know, the paint application, actually, he looks a little bit more dull. Uh, in terms of paint compared to the other one. So it's not quite as vibrant, uh, which is fitting because, again, this is just a darker, darker piece. But I had to show you that one. Uh, they have some other really cool pieces here, too. As you guys can see, some prototypes from Kodo, which looks great. And just a fun booth. A lot of resin samples here. This is fun. Right here. Sorry about that. And then, of course, we also have the Michael Jackson. This is a smooth criminal. We've seen this one before. This looks really great in person, obviously. Again, great detail. It's a fun one. So, a lot of great pieces. This is the uh, Zero Star booth here at San Diego. Very awesome. So, I am leaving for the day, day two. And the coolest thing in the world just happened to me. Uh, I ran into Athena Finger, granddaughter of Bill Finger, co-creator of Batman. Uh, I have goosebumps talking about it right now. Uh, so kind. Uh, took you know 20 minutes to talk to me. Just absolutely fantastic. Great person. And uh, again, I just met Batman royalty, which was absolutely incredible. So anyway, this is uh, everybody leaving. Show you the area where I'm at. Again, this is all the gas lamp district. Um, really great nightlife scene. Um, which is where I ate dinner last night, and I'll probably try to find a place to eat now. But day two has been just insane. Didn't get as much filming as I wanted to get done, but spent way more time just talking to other collectors, other people in the industry which was really, really fun and something really, really different and really just enjoyed it. You know, uh, being a collector, you don't always have that connection to people in real life. So being able to, you know, meet people instead of, you know, instead of being on a screen, really, really awesome. Got some great Batman art here. Met David Finch. That was another dream come true. So it's been a great day. But I'm tired, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But I hope you all have a great evening, and uh, stay tuned for day three, San Diego Comic Con. Good morning. This is day three for me, at least, at the con. Going to head back in. I want to focus today on uh, doing a few more booth tours, but also um, focusing on some of the individual statues, kind of short videos. So that is what I'm planning on doing this morning. And then I've got a couple other meetups as well, so I'm excited about that. So anyway, last day at the con. Let's get to it. So what I want you to do 
Hey guys, I'm here at the EFX booth and I'm here to see this guy right here. This is absolutely incredible. Really great props and animatronics. I have to show you this. This is awesome. Yeah, I guess Brian says it's big. It's big in Japan, right, Brian? All right, guys, so I want to highlight something kind of special here. Um, these are three pieces done by three incredible Argentinian artists, uh, including Daniel Bell, Guillermo Barbiero, and, of course, Martin Canale. And so I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of a spotlight on these three pieces. And, again, it's just really cool that they have that Argentinian, uh, you know, connection, which is really awesome. Again, you know, Martin Canale, uh, just absolutely phenomenal. One of my favorites, of course, Daniel Bell. This one right here, again, is uh, Guillermo Barbiero. Uh, he is doing a lot of the uh, current uh, tweeter head pieces, which is fantastic. Um, of course, this one for Sideshow, which is just awesome. Uh, again, we have Carnage here, which is great. Again, all three of these, Daniel Bell, Martin Canale, and of course, you know, uh, Guillermo. Just yeah, all yeah, three. Yeah. Oh, who we got here? We got Jim Mitt in the house. This setup, the Symbio setup, is incredible, man. We've seen this before, Daniel Bell's Carnage, I think Sideshow Con, right? Absolutely. But this is like a trio that you gotta have paired together. They look so great together, man. I was just talking with Martin this morning. Oh, is uh, he here? Actually, no, he's not. I was like, just online. Oh, okay. And we were talking about how all of these are done by Argentinian uh, artists, which is really oh, is cool. That, yeah. With Daniel Bell, him, and Guillermo Barbiero. And I realized that's funny how that all worked out, right? Yeah, it's really neat. It's just such a such an awesome trio of statues, that's okay, for I, sure. You're the Batman statue collector. That's I'm a symbiote guy. Yes, like, you this are. This is my thing, right? That's so I. Really digging it. I love the Venom. It's massive for quarter scale. It's like so much presence and beefiness to them. It's just awesome, right? Yeah, so cool, man. I can't wait. I mean, they should ship soon. We got already the Symbiote Spider-Man in, so. That's right. They all look great. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, have fun continuing on with the tour, my friend. They made you fresh. All right, you too. <laughs> so again, here we got Venom. Looks absolutely fantastic. You can see the Symbiote's coming off of him. This, this is a very, very large piece, uh, as you guys can see. Uh, great detail on the base that green glowing effect which is awesome again just uh, from top to bottom but again you can see the scale just very very large 
Um, very, very dynamic. You can see the uh, Spider-Man back there with the uh, the Spider-Man hood, which is cool. You got some rebar, looking fantastic. And then again, just the, the, the level of green on the bottom just looks really, really cool. Just awesome sculpts. And then of course, this is, this is the one right here from Guillermo, uh, which looks great. I have seen this one in person before, and again, it's just a, a phenomenal sculpt. I love the, the, the height of him, you know, it's that, that gothic, uh, you know, height. Very, very awesome. Chris, get out of my way, man. I know, man, I'm, we're bumping into each other. It's all about the content, right? <laughs> and then again, last but not least, we've got Carnage. Again, just all fantastic. Again, I just wanted to highlight this for you guys. Again, it's just uh, awesome to see these in person. And again, it's just awesome from three incredible artists uh, doing incredible work together. So, uh, you know, just doesn't get any better than that. Hey guys, it's Chris the Batman Statue Collector. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there. And I am here at the Sideshow Con booth. Uh, absolutely not Sideshow, SDCC Sideshow booth here. Uh, very, very awesome. And these are three incredible pieces that I wanted to highlight by three incredible Argentinian artists. Of course, Martin Canale, Daniel Bell, and Guillermo Barbiero. Absolutely fantastic here, all incredible. So I wanted to give you guys kind of a close-up look at all of them, tell you a little bit about them. So without further ado, let's check them out. Hey guys, it's Chris the Batman Statue Collector. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. I wanted to do kind of a highlight of some of the Prime 1 pieces. Of course, I did the full Sideshow booth tour here, but I do want to show you each individual Prime 1 piece in a little bit more detail, just in case you wanted to check them out. So uh, let's do that right now. All right, guys, we'll start with the uh, Batman, of course. I did an individual video on him, but it's very, very cool to be able to see the, uh, the actual mask portrait. Of course, uh, day one, we did have the unmasked portrait with the Robert Pattinson face. Looked really, really fantastic, of course. Again, incredible, incredible detail, as you guys can see. Uh, this piece uh, I have not pre-ordered yet, but after seeing him this weekend, I will be pre-ordering pre him for sure, without a doubt. Again, just very, very awesome. Very, very cool. Again, Prime One Studio, one-third scale. And then over here, we'll come over here to the Punchline and Joker. This is George Jimenez. Again, absolutely incredible from top to bottom. This is just a phenomenal piece. I do have both of these on pre-order. The Deluxe, of course. Punchline, the portrait on her is just phenomenal. Uh, I think I even prefer her over the Joker, and I love the Joker, so that says a lot. Um, but again, it's just very, very impressive to see these in person. Uh, I've seen so many people stop by these, take pictures with these. Um, you know, just to be able to see the reaction from collectors, uh, just novice collectors too, and it's like, wow, you know, Prime One just doing a phenomenal job uh, from top to bottom, which is, again, just very, very awesome. Again, these look absolutely phenomenal. Make sure she's in focus for you guys. There we go. Again, from all angles, looks really, really good. And of course, we have Sinestro and Green Lantern. Uh, these are definitely a hit of the booth. Uh, big, massive pieces. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that they want to get these. Uh, there is a light-up feature on the Hal Jordan. Uh, John did say, I don't believe there's a light-up feature on the um, Sinestro, however. Uh, big, massive pieces. Uh, as you can see, the construct, it's just very, very awesome flowing out of the lanterns themselves. The detail, you have some matte areas. You have some really shiny areas as well, which is fantastic. And again, that portrait, I love. Now, of course, the Deluxe has multiple multiple portraits you can swap out here and again all these can be purchased at sideshow uh, which is fantastic or directly through prime one uh, at their website they are up for pre-order right now uh, very very awesome again it's just really cool to be able to see these at the booth very very great paint details uh, as you can see i love the shininess of it again you have the construct coming out of the ring very very awesome this is a, a very special pairing, and again, there's, you have to, you're going to need some height for these. They're uh, definitely high uh, in terms of scale, but absolutely worth it. Of course, you guys know Prime One's craftsmanship over the years. They always deliver, and uh, just really, really special pieces from them. So that is awesome. We also have that one other piece right here. Of course, this is from Dune. Uh, this is quarter scale, guys, right here, but again, the likeness is absolutely incredible. So much detail on this guy. Look at the Robert Pattinson Batman. Really, really awesome. Again, you have kind of a sand effect base, kind of a, a rectangle base with, with the Dune logo on it, as you guys can see. But uh, there are some different swap outs on him as well. 
So very, very cool. So let me give you kind of an idea of what this little space looks like. It's really cool because they don't actually have the glass around those. So you get a better idea of uh, how they look. All right, a couple other pieces here we have. Uh, of course, we have the Ripley. Uh, this is a very, very impressive. Uh, you know, some people have said that the, the portrait looks a little bit young. Uh, this is, I did talk to John from Prime One Studio, and this is a uh, updated sculpt. Uh, they did uh, just change the paint a little bit, and it made a big, big difference. Uh, I think the likeness is really, really good to Sigourney Weaver. Um, and I think this is a really awesome piece. I love the base. It's got kind of this mirror effect, which is really, really cool. Definitely captures the spirit of the, uh, the movie itself and I think Prime One did a really, really nice job uh, just overall with the sculpt and the aesthetic of the piece. Obviously, hopefully we'll get some uh, more aliens, uh, you know, statues from them. That would be really, really incredible. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time on this guy. I know I had a special request. This is Megatron, of course, from Transformers Beast Wars. And as you can see, it looks fantastic. This is a very, very large piece. Um, very, very fun uh, so much detail as you can see again. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to spend a little bit more time on this with you guys Because I know you guys wanted to see it Again tremendous amount of detail To be honest, I know nothing about Beast Wars. I was a Transformers fan as a kid I like the movies, but I have no idea anything about Beast Wars. So I do apologize. Hey, I'm the Batman statue collector I know about Batman. Uh, I gotta stay. I gotta stay in my lane, bro, you know uh, so anyway I just wanted to show you some of the detail on it because I know you guys are going to be interested in this one as well. Very, very cool statue, again, from Prime 1. Uh, another showstopper piece here that a lot of people are commenting about is, of course, the Vamprilla. This is Art Germ Lau, of course. You've seen the cover. It looks absolutely fantastic, and it's a great direct translation, I think. Uh, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal piece. Uh, great detail across the board. It is a sizable piece. Again, this is third scale and it looks absolutely fantastic. You can see the bats transitioning, uh, which looks fantastic. Again, that's where how I'm justifying purchasing this one, of course, with the bats. But again, uh, d uh, definitely a direct translation from Stanley Art Germ Lau. It looks absolutely fantastic. Again, the artists at Prime One Studio have done a phenomenal job. Uh, it just looks really, really impressive. Uh, as you can see, the detail on the couch uh, looks really good. Um, and going into the detail, you know, it's just, it looks antique, it looks old. Uh, you have all of the snakes wrapping around the skulls, which is very, very impressive. Again, Prime One Studios artists, always top notch, always doing uh, just a phenomenal, phenomenal job. I love the, the cloth texture. You can see the blood spilled out of the chalice, with her leg tucked under. Again, just looks really good in that portrait. The portrait is obviously something very, very special here. Uh, it just looks really, really good. So again, these are the Prime One pieces here at San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, again, it's just really neat that they have both of them exposed without the glass so everybody can see them. But uh, again, they're, just, they're all awesome. They all look fantastic. And I highly recommend any of these if you are interested in them. Again, check them out. Really, really cool stuff here at San Diego Comic-Con. Again, we're uh, reporting from the Sideshow booth. Very, very awesome. Man, I'm having a great time. All right, guys, I want to dive deep a little bit on this guy. Uh, he's a little bit hard to film where he's located, uh, the, the glare of him. But this, of course, is the Robert Pattinson Premium Format from Sideshow Collectibles. Uh, as you can see, it is a big piece. I, I can't, you know, I was talking with my friends, and we can't remember a time that Sideshow has done a bike on bike piece. So that is very, very exciting, of course. Um, the sculpt is actually really, really good. Um, I, I, from top to bottom, it's a very fun piece. Again, it's something very different from Sideshow. Uh, having the full bike, let me kind of zoom back here so you guys can see kind of the size. Again, there's the Joker over there, Harley, and then of course you have Batman himself. But look at look at the, the Dark Knight behind him. I mean, look how much bigger the Dark Knight is back there. It's just really, really crazy. Um, but again, it's a really fun piece. I think the likeness is really good. Um, you know, obviously there's some competition with the Prime One piece being at one third, but this of course is quarter scale. And again, the detail is really quite phenomenal as you can see. Got a really nice stone effect, some uh, greens and kind of like some wet, you know, wet paint look. Uh, great detail on the, uh, the engine of the bike, all those elements. And again, the, the suit looks good. I, I think it looks really great. I think the portrait is definitely there. Again, it's a little bit hard to see with the glare. I do apologize, guys, but you get the idea, I think. It looks really good overall. So I just, again, I wanted to kind of just do a quick spotlight of this piece uh, to let you know, you know, what I think about it. I think it's cool. Uh, we don't have a price point on them yet. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think it'll be a little bit more expensive with the bike for sure, but 
still a cool piece from Sideshow here at uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Very, very awesome. All right, guys, Chris the Batman Statue Collector back with you guys. And this, of course, is the Dark Knight Returns. Absolutely incredible. This, of course, sculpted by the incredible Daniel Bell, which looks absolutely fantastic. Now, this piece is absolutely massive. So I just wanted to do kind of a quick take on this. I know I talked about it on the, uh, the full review uh, from a couple of days ago, of course, the full booth tour. But again, if you take a look at this, of course, it has the light-up feature. It is incredibly dynamic and truly captures the spirit of the Dark Knight Returns. Of course, Frank Miller, absolutely fantastic. And if you look at the uh, the lightning effect, uh, it is really impressive in person. And again, it is a very, very tall piece, as you guys can see. It's got that great base with the Joker. Looks great, of course, you know. And then it uh, transitions again into the uh, the very dynamic pose. Uh, again, sculpted by Daniel Bell, you know the anatomy is going to be on point. Uh, it is a very, very massive piece, though. Like, it is so much bigger than you would expect. Like, it is really tall, and this is going to take up a little bit of room in your collection, but it's going to be a highlighted piece for sure. Uh, I am one of those people that I'm like, I have no idea where I'd put this, but after seeing it in person, gosh, I think I'm going to have to pick this one up just because it is so impressive, and it is so iconic in the mythos of Batman and the history of him which is absolutely incredible. Uh, I had the pleasure to meet uh, Bill Finger's granddaughter yesterday. That was absolutely fantastic, Athena Finger. So I'm uh, definitely reminiscing right now about that and just the history of Batman. But uh, again, it's just really, really awesome to be able to see these in person, to be able to see the detail. Again, I do apologize for the glare. Uh, there is a glass here, but again, very, very impressive with the light up effect. Uh, the texturing, guys, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can see the texturing on the legs. Uh, the bloody areas on the uh, the knees. You got the batarangs being ready to be thrown up there. Uh, the cape is incredibly dynamic. Uh, if you guys can see, it kind of twists and turns. It's gnarly uh, as it as he flows. It's just very very well done. Uh, let's see if I can show you the backside a little bit. Again, I do apologize for the glare, but it's just very very impressive. It looks so good, and it's just awesome. Of course you have the Batman and Catwoman, that's a smaller scale, which they actually match really well with the, uh, the Harley and Joker, but still awesome piece here at San Diego Comic-Con. All right guys, it's Chris the Batman Statue Collector. I'm back with you guys with another uh, close-up spotlight. Again, these are just short videos to kind of highlight certain pieces. This is a beautiful piece, of course, the uh, Batman and Catwoman diorama from Sideshow Collectibles. Looks absolutely fantastic. Now, again, this is not quarter scale, so it's a little bit smaller, but it packs a punch. It is absolutely fantastic in terms of, uh, you know, just sculpt. It's really beautiful. The paintwork on it looks great. Her, her portrait in particular looks really good. He's looking off to the distance, um, but I just absolutely think it's fantastic. And one thing I did notice is it scales very, very well with the Harley Quinn and Joker. So if that's something that you guys have considered, uh, I highly recommend you pick up the two because they look really good together scale-wise. Um, I just think they did a really nice job on both of them. Of course, you have the Joker in the canon and, of course, Harley Quinn herself looking really, really good, I think. But again, if you pair them up, they look really great together. Again, from top to bottom, Sideshow is doing a phenomenal job with these sculpts. Um, I really like, I don't remember who sculpted this one. I've got to look that one back up. But <clears throat> they did a phenomenal, phenomenal job. It just looks really, really good. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of highlight some of these again for you guys, a little bit close-ups. Again, I wish I could get in a little tighter, but we do have glass. But it does give you a pretty darn good idea. And just to see how it scales next to uh, the Dark Knight uh, Returns right next to it, it gives you kind of an idea of the scale. Um, I still think they look pretty darn good together, even though there are a different scale. But again, incredible stuff here at uh, Sideshow Booth at San Diego Comic-Con. All right, guys, I am Chris the Batman Statue Collector back at the Sideshow Con booth, and uh, we're going to be looking at a piece from Martin Canale today. This, of course, is the Ronin Wolverine Premium Format. This is brand new. We saw this one premiere at Sideshow Con, and so I wanted to kind of do a little featurette on it uh, because I think I actually maybe missed this one. I didn't get very much coverage of it for the booth tour, and so I wanted to show you uh, this one in a little bit more detail. Uh, this one is absolutely fantastic. I am hoping that this ends up becoming a line. I would love to see that. Uh, the level of detail here is really, really impressive. Again, beautifully, beautifully sculpted, and I, again, I, I love the work of Martin Canale, just very, very awesome. You can see the arrows going into his armor, which looks great. Um, of course, you have the, uh, the the swords. It just looks absolutely fantastic here. So from the pictures, I thought this was a variant. 
of Martin Canali's brown suit, right? Yep. But it's not. It's not. But it is like it's equally dynamic. It's equally dynamic, and I actually think it's even more of an upgrade compared to that other sculpt. I, I think they're both phenomenal, but I love the the theming yeah, yeah. on this one. I think it's really I think really there good. There was a mixed reaction on the. Uh, of course, uh, as the always, line. as always. Uh, I, I haven't really seen feedback on this one yet. I, I would assume there's that same mixed reaction, but you can't say that it's not a unique piece or pose. And I'm kind of glad that it's not a variant, to be I, honest. Me too, me too. I, I used to be a variant guy until I had like 17 of the same Hulk sculpt <laughs> in different colors. <laughs> but uh, it's something that I need to really absorb because the base has a lot going on with like, what, dead ninjas or such? Yeah, I think it's like uh, the spirit warriors, I think is what they're saying that they are, which is really cool. But there's a perspective to it too, right? Yeah. smaller and he's kind of... And yeah, is doing a lot with the Force Perspective uh, bases, which offers something a, a little different, a little original, you it's know? not for me. Yep. Uh, it might. There's probably a huge audience for it. I I don't really like the perspective bases, but uh, hey, if that's your thing, I, I love that you love it. That's right. Uh, I'm a I'm a Disney guy, and Disney uses that a lot in their parks, and so I I, I always kind of appreciate like the Spider Man's over there. You know, that's, that's what I was it's, you know, to. yeah, it's something different. You know, I like the fact that they all three go together. Somebody can kind of put a little collection together. Not for me again, uh, but you know, artist subjective. That's a right. Something for everybody. That's right. Absolutely. Well, it's a fun piece. What about Thor, man? Thor was one of those ones that in pictures it was kind of okay. We'll get back to it a little bit and see again some of the detail again from Martin. So this is a really special piece, guys. Um, and again, I really would like to see them do more with this. You can, guys can kind of see how he's lunging forward. Uh, definitely different, you know. It's definitely different than his other piece. Uh, I think again, I, I feel like this is even a, uh, even an upgrade. I think that there's you know more detail. There's uh, you know an incredible portrait. Again, they kind of have it on a corner here, so it's a little bit hard to capture here uh, for the video. But again, I just wanted to capture this again, just to give you guys kind of an idea of what you can get with this piece. A little spotlight here. It's just really really awesome to see. But absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. They're really, really cool. So again, just wanted to give you an idea of this piece, again, from the incredible Martin Canale, here at San Diego Comic-Con, Sideshow booth, Jim Mint so over there. So really DC. awesome. Yeah. Man, doesn't get much better than this. All right, guys, it's Chris the Batman Statue Collector. I'm back at the Sideshow booth here at San Diego Comic-Con, and I wanted to highlight some of these amazing uh, premium formats. Uh, of course, we have Spider-Man. This is brand new by Daniel Bell, which is, again, really, really crazy. These are just kind of short videos spotlighting some of the art here uh, at the booth. Again, the Force Perspective base, I know some of you either love it or hate it, but it's still very, very impressive to see uh, these in person. I think the Spider-Man looks like he's directly right out of the comic, which looks really, really cool. Uh, just, I'm very, very impressed with this. I think it's my favorite piece. I uh, really like Spider-Gwen as well. Uh, we also, of course, have Miles Morales over here, which is great, again, sculpted uh, here at Sideshow. Very, very dynamic piece. Uh, again, you have that Force Perspective base which looks great. I really like the train going around the corner. Again, very, very stylized. So again, this might not be for everybody, but it is something definitely unique, something special in my opinion. Very, very fun. Then of course we have Spider-Gwen on the other side to complete the trio. Uh, she is really fun. Uh, she's got some different swap outs, which is awesome. But it's just again, really, really cool to see all of these on display. Again, they all look really, really great together as you guys can see. Uh, very, very awesome. And again, Spider-Gwen looking good. And then of course, again, the Daniel Bell Spider-Man. Really, really awesome piece from Sideshow Collectibles. Highly recommend this one. Something different, base looks great. I really like it. It just, again, it feels very comic book to me, which is awesome. Into the thick of it. Hey guys, it's Chris the Batman Statue Collector and I am here with Ant Adams. It's finally it's awesome to finally meet you yes. here at the PCS booth. This is so incredibly awesome. Yep, and yeah, you Yes, yeah, right. And you have uh, offered to kind of give us a booth tour yeah, today, absolutely. which is absolutely going to be absolutely. awesome. So, uh, how's, how's your con been so far? It's been good. I'd say uh, this con is a little different than old cons, right? You can uh, It's not as crowded as it usually is. I, made a, I actually made a comment to another uh, person that walked by. I said, I can actually see the concrete on the floor <laughs> where usually it's just filled with people, but no, it's going pretty good so far. Awesome. We still have tomorrow and Sunday, of yes. course, you know, yes. so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, let's do the tour. All right, perfect. All right. 
So first off, we're gonna go ahead and hit the Ninja Turtles. So we have our first, this is actually the first ever third scale Ninja Turtle line. Uh, this was actually developed uh, with myself and, and Brian K from the K Brothers to come up with something unique for the Turtles. We want to do something a little different than what's been done in the past. Uh, Diego did an amazing job on these sculpts. Uh, as you can see, we have Raph already painted. He will come with two swap out heads. I'm actually working on getting a third head approved that is completely unique. It's off canon, which is why it takes a little while to get that approved. But if I can get that approved, it's going to look amazing. Uh, Raph will go up for sale on August 4th, so that's coming, and then Donnie will probably put up in October. I gotta tell you, these things look absolutely incredible. It was so cool. I actually saw them yesterday, and I just can't believe how big they are. It's yes. just awesome. And you mentioned yes. Brian uh, Kacharik. Yes. That's awesome. And he's yep. you know, full-time working with you guys yes, now, right? Absolutely. Which is, that I saw a, that announcement. That's yeah, really cool. Yeah, a good win for us. Okay? Yeah, he, he, him on the team. he is absolutely fantastic. So that's a, a great, great win for PCS, obviously. Yep. And uh, just really, really cool stuff here at these Turtles. I, they just, they are blowing me away and again they're just massive at third scale which yeah. is just really cool and, and actually one thing I want to point out we tried to keep the depth of the statue under 15 inches so both of these will still fit on your shelf even though they're third scale so, so you definitely listen to collectors yes, you understand absolutely. their pain in terms of space absolutely. and depth which is absolutely fantastic absolutely. so that let me just kind of show everybody real quick to what he's talking about so again you don't have to worry too much about the depth in terms of you know space it's going to display really really nice on your shelf and uh, again, all of us collectors really, really appreciate that. But look at the fine detail, guys. Absolutely incredible. Of course, this is an un unpainted prototype, but you can see the other one is fully painted and looks absolutely fantastic. Let me just come over here real quick and show everybody how great that looks. Man, these are really awesome. Yeah, you can see the concept in the background as well of the other two turtles that will be coming. We actually plan on doing the four baddies with Shredder in the front, Krang in the back, and then Rocksteady and Bebop on the side. Oh so my gosh, it's like a Turtles dream, my fan. I mean, people are going to fl flip out, which is awesome. That's awesome. All right, what else we got? So Mortal Kombat. People have been begging us forever to show some more Mortal Kombat. So we started off with our quarter-scale new Sabot. Uh, this one was designed by Max and myself. We wanted to do something really, really cool here. Kind of show his clone coming out of his little purple and black goo portal. Uh, I think this one turned out very well. It is my, so awesome. My goal here is to try to get this priced in at probably seven to eight hundred, which wow. is actually really good. Really good. Really good. Yeah, really good. Yeah, really good. So I'm trying to really get the price down for you guys on this. I've been hammering our factories like crazy, and as you can see, people get excited. That's right. As they as they should. As they should. It's uh... insane. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Now oh, we got some Mortal Kombat right yes. here. So then we got the ladies. Third scale. We got Melina and Jay. Jay went up for pre order yesterday. Melina will be up probably, we'll probably do October for her as well. Uh, she comes with an unmasked head. We didn't show it because uh, NetherRealm wants us to change it to the MK11 head. Okay. So we'll get that, uh, get that going and change it up, get her up. Uh, we've had comments about the uh, the mesh in between the outfit. Uh, that was actually a request from licensing that we had to add, but I'm pretty sure some people will get uh, creative uh, with that mesh when they buy it. Yeah, uh, I, I see that. She will be fully painted underneath, so oh, I'll, just, okay. I'll leave it at that. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, people are going to get creative. I like it. I don't, I don't. I think the mesh looks just fine. Yeah, really. I like it. Yeah, I think it's fine. It adds a little bit of uh, you know depth to it. It's yeah. nice. It's real nice. Yep. All right, both of those are looking fantastic. And then moving on to our Captain America, we got one six scale. This was actually sculpted by Franco. Uh, we went through this thing probably for months just trying to get it right. Uh, our biggest issue was trying to convey kind of that motion with the base of just destroying a, a Ultron clone. Uh, and we finally got it right. I mean, I, I gotta say, I'm extremely happy with how this one finally turned out. This is from the Gamer First Future Revolution game. Him just slicing straight through. We got the explosion of the head. I uh, got parts on the shield from the de destruction. It came out very well on that piece. It's really awesome. You said this is Franco? Yes. That's fantastic. We're yep. a big fan of Franco. Yeah, Absolutely. Awesome. He's, he's probably, yeah, he's awesome. Well, these are really great. I think these look you know, even better in person. It's yes. really, really impressive. Well, to, to make it even better, these Dragos, both this one and the one in the back, these are factory samples. So these oh, are that's fantastic. Prototypes. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. So this so is exactly this is what you're going to get. Oh, yeah. I feel like the likeness is really good yep. uh, on him. Uh, actually, all of these are fantastic. Yep. Again, it's just one of those things where sometimes until you see these in person, you can't really appreciate just how phenomenal they are. 
Uh, and these these are just really really good, really good likeness. Of course, uh, Drago, Drago there, and then of course and that Paul Creek. I love this. Yeah, one's my favorite. It's all the living it. in America. Yes, That's right. Absolutely, absolutely. I love it. Yeah, this is so much fun. The great portrait on him. Yeah, and our seamstress did an amazing job on this uh, mixed media outfit. I mean, the stars and stripes, the hat. I mean, everything just came together on this piece. And then, of course, we got Clubber Lane coming uh, later as well. We'll have him. And actually, since I got, let me go ahead and just show a picture of the Clubber Lane sculpt since we're all here. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Is this like a world exclusive right yes. here? This is, oh my gosh. So there's a Look at Lane. that, guys. That is a phenomenal sculpt. So this thing is going to be awesome. I can't oh wait to Oh my gosh, it that is fantastic. Now one thing I did try to work on, uh, we were considering doing an autograph version. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd we be had neat. connections to get Stallone's, uh, Apollo's, or not Apollo's, uh, Carl Weathers, uh, and then also Dolph's autograph. That's really... Uh, the problem was it came in too late after we already released ah, the statues. Ah. So maybe in the future we'll do like a Rocky Diorama, this is exclusive as well, a Rocky Diorama uh, in the future and then include the autographs with it. For all that, that, that'd so, be cool. So that any, any, any chance for a Thunder Lips? Uh, so <laughs> we looked in the Thunder Lips, but we did do a Hulk Hogan WWE. Yes, you did, and yes. it was great. It yes. was a great piece. Yep, so we got that one So yeah, you could you get your Hulk Hogan fixed that yes. way. That's right, that's right. Absolutely. Now, now, this is Rocky right too. too, yeah. Yep. The determined ready to fight, let's get it. He looks really good. And then if you pay attention, we got the matching bases. So you got Rocky II, Apollo Creed, you got your Rocky II, Rocky. Oh, that's perfect. And, and of course bases. these two. Yeah, yeah, that's really awesome. So that's, that's a great idea. And then this Rocky, people have been begging for months, years to see the updated portrait. This is your factory sample. This is what yeah, you're getting. It's phenomenal. It definitely upgraded. It looks oh, yeah. really good. He no uh, longer he, looks like Al Pacino. I was going to say, I, 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 hey, I and you know what? You know, I talk to a lot of collectors, a lot of statue companies, and yeah. it, it, we appreciate that so much when the companies listen. It's just and we, pr we pride fantastic. ourselves on that. Yeah. Like, I don't want to put out something that people don't want, right? That's a waste of my time, waste of your time. I'd rather pay, we, I paid six people to do that sculpt. I love that. We got it right. That's fantastic. That, that's money, but end of the day, I want to display this too, and if I don't like it, it's not coming out. That's dedication to the fans yes. right there. That's yeah. that's absolutely fantastic. Well, he looks great. Both of these look phenomenal. And again, updated portrait. Yes. Looks really, really good. Likeness is spot on. Love it. Love it. And then you can see the other Rocky on the other All side. All right, we'll come around the other side. We'll kind of highlight the back here of the Italian Stallion robe. Yep is really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> and then you got Rocky like, but seriously, Does he come with both robes or is it two different versions? Two different versions. Two this different your, versions. Uh, Rock, and actually we've got this label. But uh, this is actually the Rocky 1 version right here. Okay. You get the robe, you get the uh, towel underneath. Uh, and actually, this is actually something we, we threw in. People requested it, uh, a robe rack. So we actually, this wasn't on the pre-order. That's awesome. But in production, we added it. So That's you guys fantastic. get a free robe rack with it as well. I was going to say, how awesome so, is that? An upgrade for free. You can't yes, go wrong with yes. that. That's fantastic. So like my plan for my collection is to show one Rocky without the robe on, on the rack, and then show the other Rocky with, with the robe on. That's perfect. Yeah, that's yep. a good idea. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, that looks great. And again, you got the yellow or red. That's awesome. Yep. And then we got Drago. This is really cool. When he fought Rocky in Rocky IV. Yes. And yes, I've been getting the question. Yes, there is a Rocky IV version coming. So oh, that's exciting news. We planned, on, we planned on showing it uh, actually today or during uh, San Diego, but I couldn't find his bottom half oh, when okay. I was leaving this week, so All I was right. like, forget it. <laughs> next show. There's always a next show, yes, right? We got, yes. we got New York coming up. That's right, we I'll got, be there with you guys. Okay, so that's awesome, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, we'll, we'll show him uh, then as well. And yes. of course, he'll be completely ripped, shredded. So it's different bodies, older Rocky faces, a little bit skinnier, that's all that cool. good stuff. That's cool. So that's awesome. We want to try awesome. to keep it as realistic and on point as possible. That's really so. awesome. Well, these all look great. All right, what else we got over here? Let's see. Uh, let's go hit Black Panther. All right. So this is so this is our Black Panther from Marvel's Avenger game, Gamerverse version. This will be front and center of my collection. This is probably one of my favorite pieces. It is. This it's so impressive. Game. Presence is just ridiculous. Yes, it has height. We've actually considered uh, possibly including like a separate back and a separate spear to have it uh, show a little bit lower, but. At the end of the day, we're like, that just takes away from the presence of this throne doing that. And I actually love the unmasked portrait. I actually think I love it more than I love the, uh, the masked portrait. You can I see the determination in his eyes. Yep. The hair looks fantastic. It almost it, look, it almost looks like hand-punched hair, really. It's, yes. that, it's that well sculpted. Yep. And then next in our third scale line uh, will be Blade. So Blade oh. is 
coming. Oh, that'll be nice. Yeah, yeah. Blade from Midnight Suns is coming October. So uh, Franco sculpting that right now. Nice. So, uh, again, you can't well. go wrong with that. Yep. Bass is really intricate. Really, really fun bass. Yep. And then Diego uh, sculpted this. He's full time with us now. As oh, well. that's great. He did an amazing job on this. He actually did the Mega Man as well, which, oh my God. That was another one where I paid three different people to do it. <laughs> Diego brought it home for us. Well, this is a centerpiece for sure. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's so massive and so awesome looking. Yeah, uh, definitely getting your room. bang for your buck on this one, for yep. sure. Looks really, really good. And then again, with the, the factory pricing. So I've been hammering our factories like crazy to get these costs down for you guys. So we were able to get this down to 1500 I would say three months ago, that would have easily been over $2,000 if I could do it. So Easy. We're yeah. going to continue to hammer that home for you guys because we got to make stuff it for you, so. It's really we great value it. here, clearly. Yep. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. And I got to see this guy. I'm excited to see this guy. Yes. Wolverine. This is, I think this is my favorite of the booth. Like, yes. I absolutely love this. Obviously, you guys have tweaked this from the initial absolutely. reaction. We got rid of the egghead. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, I would say so. You listen. And I have yep. to say, this is just phenomenal. The, the texture, the sculpt, yeah, the paint look application. The, look at the shoulder the shoulder blades there, yep. the weathering, just really awesome. And with this uh, texture, so the original version we put out had the texture on it, but it was so light. So when it got painted, it basically got painted over the texture. So we went back to Franco and said, hey, we just need you to just deepen that texture so that when we print, mold, cast, it survives iterations, which it has. So just so you guys know, this is also a factory version. This is not a prototype. So this is exactly what you're gonna get I gotta tell you guys, if you, it's, I mean, I know it's not gonna translate as well on the camera, but this thing is phenomenal. I think it's one of the best Wolverines I've ever seen. Uh, it's just incredible. If you guys are a Wolverine fan, this is a must buy uh, from PCS. It's just absolutely yeah, incredible. Great. Absolutely one incredible. Another one from Franco, knocking it out the park. Gosh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Man, I love it. All right, we got another piece now, over here in the corner. This big this guy is right here. Another one of my favorites. This is really cool. Mega Man X. So, this one actually took us, so like I said, I paid multiple people to get this sculpt uh, just right. It's so intricate. Uh, getting all the pieces to connect together, uh, all the cords and cables to come together. It actually lights up from the top and the bottom nice. as well. Uh, the paint job on this took six weeks to paint this. Oh my gosh. Uh, if you look real close to the uh, light blue on his head on the front, you can see that candy coated sparkling oh, yeah. paint job. This is actually an automotive paint oh, it's job. Oh, it, 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 it does. It looks like it, it's and really beautiful. It's, that automotive paint job is everywhere. So even the white has that candy coated glitter to it, even the, the silver, everything. So it turned, Jason Wires knocked this paint job out. Uh, he's part. fantastic too, yeah. it's, it's, uh, that's awesome. And this is, I mean, just talk about it, another centerpiece uh, yeah. for your collection if you are a Mega Man fan. And clearly, uh, this has got great scale, great paint applications like you said, and so much storytelling elements yes, going on with absolutely. this one, which is a lot of, a lot of fun. And again, we really appreciate those storytelling elements. Uh, so yeah, if you're a Mega Man fan, this thing is insane. It's and then so on awesome. the price, same with this one. If this was done by any other maker, they probably would have been charging about twenty five hundred dollars. Easy. I say so, this. De this definitely looks like a twenty five hundred dollar piece, yeah. without a doubt. And then we have a zero version as well. We planned on showing it here, but Capcom wanted us to do a Mega Man X version instead of an X2. So we had to re-sculpt the boot, re-sculpt the head, and then we'll show it and pre-order it probably in about a month, uh, the updated version. That's awesome. So maybe New York, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yep, very absolutely, good. Absolutely, absolutely. And then this is kind of the surprise of the show. This is awesome. Nobody was expecting the American Psycho. So you got to have your Patrick Bateman with the manic head, comes with the uh, stoic head as well, and the exclusive. Uh, if you look at the base, we have the different scenes from the movie where he's peeling off the face peel. We got him about to attack uh, Patrick on the on the right with the axe. So we have awesome. the business card scene on the right side. Then on the back, we have where he's running down the stairs about to drop the chainsaw. Oh, that's fun. On the, on the girl on the bottom. Great portrait. And Christian Bale, of course. Uh, and Dennis did an amazing look. job painting this. That is fantastic. I, I've got to ask, though, is there any, uh, any opportunity for a blood splatter version, maybe? Yes, so we have a blood splatter. X that we're not showing because we don't have blood splatter on the cloth. I'm trying to figure out a way to do uh, like a cloth blood splatter on that as well if we do that version because I know the answer that's going to come out. Why is there blood on the X but not on the Alpha? Sure, yeah, sure, so, yep. Yeah, so we're still doing that piece. So we'll see if we can if we can pull that one off. So, well, it looks and if you really look great. At the, the other pieces, if you look at the base, so our we try to improve everything we do. So our Myers base had the reliefs going around it as well. Yes. They were more flat pictures. 
if you look at this one, these are almost like scopes in themselves, how deep yeah, it's a, those are. It is for sure three, I mean, it's just a whole other sculpt in itself. Yep. I mean, it really is like another portrait, yep. which again, captures uh, Christian Bale perfectly there. Yep. I mean, it looks exactly like him. It's yep. just really, really Jack fun. Jack just knocked it out of the park in that base. Uh, he ended up coming out amazing. Jack is fantastic as well. This, so much talent in this booth, it's really awesome. That's really awesome. And then we got our new logo. Let's see, let's see it right there. That looks great. So I think if most of you probably know, we, we bought this company five years ago, so this is our five year anniversary. We basically wanted to do a new new logo. I think everybody knows the mess we had to deal with when we first bought the company. So we had to do like a phoenix rising from the ashes. I love that. That's awesome. Megan. And then if you look, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars. That represents the seven people that stuck with PCS, even through the turmoil, moved to Charlotte. It's the seven original uh, members of PCS. Well, that's awesome. That's a great story. Absolutely. PCS Reborn, which I love to hear. That's awesome. Well, what an incredible booth here. Uh, I've got to ask, of course, being a Batman guy, any, any chance at a DC license down the road? I'm working on WB. Okay. I'm working on WB. Yes. Love to see that. I know a lot of collectors would love to see stuff from PCS yes. uh, again. Just uh, so Brian, much talent. And my other art. So it's funny. Both my art directors are named Brian. I got Brian with an I and Brian with a Y. Brian with a Y used to work at WB. So oh, that's so that's maybe really fingers that crossed. Going. Then that would Absolutely. be incredible. That's Absolutely. incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I apologize for the noise. There's a booth yes. behind us, but uh, this They're is playing just... rock paper scissors. With oh, the of, camera course, of course, of course, of course. Well, anyway, I just want to thank you so very much for taking time Absolutely. to do this booth tour. This was so cool and so awesome to meet you finally yes. and uh, much success to PCS in the future. It's awesome. It's awesome. All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll yep. see you next time. Bye. Awesome. J. Scott Campbell, that was absolutely awesome. We actually talked about Sideshow statues and the possibility if they could ever do some DC ones. So that was really cool to be able to talk to him, a little behind the scenes stuff. So anyway, I'm gonna see if I can go find Frank Miller for Frank Miller's presentation. Let's see if I can get in. Crack me if 
this is wrong, but Chantal Nong, who's a, an executive of Warner Brothers, the producer, one of the producers on the film, just contacted me and said, you know, Matt and Paul were talking, and um, Paul had really got into the role of the Riddler and created all this material, a backstory that even extends beyond the story that you see in the movie itself. And he's got journals of like crazy writing and diagrams and stuff. Like he really had deep dive and kind of lost himself in this role. And he would love to kind of tell the story of this character that we're lacking there. So I just want to say, <laughs> uh, you're so chilling in the movie. And uh, I think really, you, got, you and Matt really brought a different dimension to the character that didn't exist before. So it's super exciting to see Riddler given his due. So um, Riddler year one debuts September, till October of this year, six part story. Oh. Yeah, and we're gonna actually show you some. Yes. This is That's incredible. Incredible. So this is a cover by a legendary artist, Paul Sienkiewicz, and interior art uh, by Stefan Subic, who is in Serbia. You want to talk a little bit about how your work, like he lives in Serbia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he lives here in America. Bill Sienkiewicz might be here. Well, we're so lucky that Bill is doing our Yeah, Bill? Yes. Um, all right. <laughs> that, that, that's Bill's cover for issue one. Um, we're so lucky that, that he would do this for, for us. Uh, and I, uh, I'm working with an artist named Stevan Subic. He's a Serbian artist. He's not the dominant comic here in the U.S. <laughs> and then we have his brother from a I'm gonna take a bathroom break because I know how Todd is, he's just gonna talk. What they're asking themselves right now is why is Todd McFarlane at a DC panel? <laughs> it's a curious thing. Question. So I'm gonna explain it to everybody in five words. And at the end of that fifth word, you're gonna get it. Here we, here we go, five words. Batman, Spawn, Capullo, McFarlane, December. <laughs> <laughs> so he has a YouTube channel called the Batman Statue Collector. Oh, okay. All stuff Batman. Everything oh, Batman. Okay. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, that's a girl. Thank you so much. Oh. Okay. Got it. Take a look at this, guys. Yeah. Absolutely a dream book right here. Batman number one, 1940, 8.0. Absolutely incredible. And this is Heritage Auctions here at San Diego Comic Con, guys. Oh, look at that. Absolutely just oh, holding iconic history right here. Thank you so much. This is so cool. Thank you. Got a couple more here, guys. Of course, Detective Comics right there, 1939. And then, of course, Detective Comics right here, 31. I'm right here with. Delaney and family. What do you think? What do you think of this booth? <laughs> well, I buy from Heritage all the time. They're one of the best auction houses in the business. So I'm at this booth a lot every year. I come. I come. Well, they are awesome. They have some amazing books. We were just looking at the, the first appearance of Captain America over there. That was really it's awesome. Very pretty copy. It's very Absolutely. very cool. Oh, what yeah. a great booth. Oh, I love it. Yep. First Daredevil. Oh, where? Oh, that's first, awesome. First Justice League of America. Oh, I, yep, yep. First Eight appearance of the like Silver Surfer. Oh. And it goes on and on. On and on. What an incredible booth. That's awesome. Just learning from Jeff here, this was a original art from Detective Comics. Two issues before Batman came out. I mean, come on, how awesome is that? <laughs> it's incredibly rare. It's amazing that it even survived. It's original art didn't have the cachet back then that it has now. They thought it was just throwaway. So the fact that this even exists is amazing. It's awesome. It's really cool. We're just looking at this uh, cover here, the Defenders. 
I guess it's not Hulk. I guess I thought it was Hulk. That's Hulk. Oh, it is Hulk. Yeah. So this is one of the uh, Treasury editions that Marvel put out in the 1970s. They were very large, maybe uh, oh, 12 by 18, maybe, or 12 by 17, dollar fifty. I have a big stack. So it was the Avengers before the Avengers, then, I'm assuming? No, the Avengers started first? in 1963. The Defenders came later. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice book. It's the, the Treasury editions were literally this big. And they were super fun for collectors because, you know, they were usually a dollar, a dollar fifty. Some of them were reprints, some of them were original. But just to have this giant sized comic in your little. Yeah, giant really color fun. and all, yeah, the art. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, it's awesome. It's, great. it's awesome. Again, this booth is just mind blowing. So much history right here. This page is out of the first appearance of uh, Iron Man, Suspense Comics number 39. Wow. What is that? Is that. $200,000? Yeah. Is that what that that's, is? That's yeah, two hundred. Yeah. Pre-auction estimate of $200,000. $200,000 right there, guys. Wow. And there's an original Charles Schultz. Those are super popular. And that's really neat. That's all right. That is Katar. Hey guys, it's Chris the Batman Statue Collector. Hope everybody's doing great. I wanted to do a spotlight here on some of the J. Scott Campbell pieces. Actually, I just met him earlier today and I wanted to do just a spotlight video. Of course, this is their brand new Evil Queen. Uh, this is a prototype, of course, but it looks really quite phenomenal. Uh, again, you have the great mirror mirror back there, which is awesome. Really beautiful piece. I actually talked to J. Scott a little bit about this one and the process. I was uh, trying to get him to do some DC pieces, of course. Uh, and I think he would like to do them, actually, which would be really cool. He's just real busy. Uh, this is my favorite one right here. This is uh, Red Riding Hood. And I just think they did a really, really nice job. Really great transition uh, from his work itself. Uh, just really, really well done. Attention to detail. Obviously, again, this is uh, you know fully sculpted polystone. But I think she looks really fantastic. Obviously, great, great sculpt. And then, of course, we have the Tinkerbell. This is the fall variant of her, which is great. Again, this is a smaller scale piece because, obviously, she is meant to be smaller, which is awesome. And then, of course, we also have, you know, the Alice in Wonderland piece. This is also the variant, which is awesome. Uh, can't remember if this one is shipping currently. I think it has shipped already. And then, of course, way back in the back, we have the Cinderella. Again, directly translated from J. Scott's art, which is just phenomenal. Again, they all look absolutely fantastic together, as you guys can see. Just a fantastic pairing. And I know that they're working on some new ones as well. So, very, very exciting. Again, J. Scott Campbell Collection. Fairy tale fantasies. Very, very awesome. Here at the Sideshow Con booth. Very, very awesome here at San Diego Comic Con. All right, guys. Here we have incredible Dark Knight Returns Batman. This one's been out for a while, but it's really cool to be able to see it in person. It's really quite large. Looks really good. You have the mutant down there. Looks awesome.
Hey guys, so that wraps up day three here at San Diego Comic-Con. I have not had anything to eat all day. I have not had anything to drink all day. I have been going nonstop. Uh, incredible panels. Getting to see Paul Dano. I mean, come on. How awesome was that? Jim Lee. Uh, met Jock. Met Sean Murphy today. Uh, met Tony Daniels. Uh, just incredible. Saw Todd McFarlane. Saw Frank Miller. Just what an incredible, incredible day it's been. And what an incredible event it's been. Uh, I'm going to do a whole wrap up of my, you know, picks, best of, if you will. I'll do that in a separate video. But thanks for coming along the journey with me. This has been just incredible. Uh, I know this will be, be out probably in a few days after the event. Uh, but man, San Diego Comic Con, overwhelming, insane. And I think every convention now from here on out will be a downgrade because it's just so, you just don't understand unless you're here. So anyway, it's been an awesome first experience. Thanks for coming along the journey with me. Hope you're all doing great. If you haven't done so, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you, not in San Diego, back in the back cave. Bye, everybody. Hey guys, thank you so very much for watching today. And if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button right here on the screen and check out these two awesome videos. I think you're going to love them. And also please join us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I would love to have you join in all the fun. Thank you guys so very much for watching. See you in the Batcave.